right, we are going to talk a little bit about writing our structure and theme analysis. The goal of this is that we are really going to center on one of the themes that you developed in checkpoint two. And so while you are going to focus specifically on your scene that you did your storyboard for that you wrote on last week, we are going to also focus on a broad theme that is shown throughout King Lear, but we're gonna focus specifically on how your scene and where it's placed in the play helps to illuminate that theme in some capacity. So let's look at what I'm expecting in just one second. There. So when we are writing the connection to theme, we want to remember that we're being assessed on structure and we're being assessed on theme. So this means that I'm going to be looking for two paragraphs, one that's pretty focused on structure and one that's pretty focused on theme. So your first paragraph should discuss and support how your scene fits into the overall structure of the play. And specifically, is it exposition? Is it rising action? Is it the climax? Is it the falling action? Is it the denouement? Like, and how do you know that? And denouement is also resolution. Um, so how do you know that it's rising action or the climax? What is happening in your scene that defends it? And what's happened before that defends the idea that it's exposition, rising action, or something like that? Okay, so let's look at an example first of this first paragraph before we move on. Um, so this is an example of looking at structure. This is not about King Lear. This is about Shakespeare's play Macbeth, but it's a good way to show you a little bit of what I expect. This scene, placed as it is in the beginning of Act 3, represents a major turning point in the play and the beginning of the climax of the story. For Macbeth at this point to order Banquo's assassination is a major shift in his character for a number of reasons. First, this is his choice and his choice alone. There is no indication that Lady Macbeth is influencing him to do this, and it is unlikely as there is no evidence that she is even aware of the second prophecy. Second, he is doing this in an underhanded and dishonest way by not killing Banquo himself, but rather by lying to two poor men about Banquo being their enemy and then paying them to do it for him. Once Macbeth puts this plan to murder Banquo into motion, this is a decision that he cannot come back from. A couple of things that I notice. One, in the first sentence, this writer is telling me right away what part of the play, what part of the structure of the play this scene takes place in. And then they take some time to defend it. And some key phrases that I see is usually in a climax, we have a major shift in a character. And in a climax, we have something that someone cannot return from. And I know this is blocking it, but it'll be gone in a little bit. So those are two very important parts that I notice. Additionally, this author spends a significant amount of time showing what's happened before in the play and the reasons why this is a shift in character for him. So we have all these defenses that are coming directly from the play. This author goes on for a little bit. I cut some of this out just for the example, uh, but this example is linked in the worksheet that you will be completing if you want to look at the whole one, okay? So this will be paragraph one. Now let's go back and look at paragraph two. In paragraph two, you're going to be focusing just on theme. So what theme is developed and in, specifically in your scene and how does your scene help develop it? So think about what happened before the scene and then how does your scene add to the development? I feel like I just said the same thing like four times, but hopefully one of those landed in your brain somewhere. Um, so let's look at an example of paragraph two that focuses on theme. Notice right away the first sentence has the theme in it. As such, this scene is, a, is key to the development of one of the major themes in Macbeth, which is that power is a seductive and corrupting force that can turn even the best of us into something evil and terrible. Great theme. 
In the end, the immoral decisions that people are forced to make to gain and then maintain power will inevitably lead to their downfall. In the first act of the play, Macbeth is described as brave, valor's minion, and noble. He is rewarded with the title of the Thane of Cawdor for his loyal service to King Duncan. But now, as Macbeth has gained power, he has become corrupted from how he originally was presented to us to the point where he no longer resembles the character described in the beginning of the play. He is now a cold and ruthless man who is willing to murder his former best friend and his young son to maintain his power. The turning point for this theme is here in Act 3, Scene 1, because it represents the moment where there is no redemption anymore for Macbeth. He has completely changed from his original self and has allowed power to make him evil and corrupt. All right, so again, as I mentioned, boom, major theme right here. And then this writer makes sure to talk about what happened before. So we're talking about what happened in the first act of the play and basically how power has um, seduced him and then corrupted him. And then we build up to that and build up to the end. There's a little bit more in here. You'll notice the ellipses. Um, again, I just cut it to give a quicker example, but the full example will be linked in your worksheet. So hopefully that helps you have an idea of what I'm looking for. Some questions that you will be considering in your worksheet. Uh, for paragraph one, what part of the plot pyramid does the scene fit into? How does it function as that part of the plot? And what are the significant changes or developments that advance the plot or develop the characters in the scene? For paragraph two, you're gonna be thinking about what is your theme statement? What happened before this theme? Sorry, what happened before this scene to develop the theme? So what big actions went on before that support that theme as well? And then how does this scene specifically develop it? What examples do you see in the scene? And then how will this theme continue to develop over the rest of the play? So you will want to add in towards the end how this theme will eventually play out. So your next steps right now are to respond to our discussion board with one question about this assignment, something you might not be sure on, or just one comment that shows you watch this tutorial. One of the reasons that I have you guys put a question in there is because you might not, you might be thinking a question that a lot of other people are thinking, and we can put the answers in that discussion board to help everyone. Um, but also, I just want to make sure that you watch these tutorials because I, I put some work into them and I know that they can help you. Um, and then begin working on scene structure and theme analysis worksheet. Um, this is in Schoology, and if you have it completed by Wednesday uh, at midnight, I will give you feedback on Thursday so that you can have your final draft completed by Friday. Um, if you do not have it in by Wednesday, I will not offer um, any feedback, but I will give you late credit. Um, but the goal, of course, is to get 100% on your final product, and I'm looking for really good paragraphs since I'm cutting this project down just to a few paragraphs. If you have questions, come see me in office hours, shoot me a message on Schoology, send me an email, or put it on that discussion board. I definitely want to help you be successful, and I miss you guys a lot. Uh, let me know if you need anything. Thanks. Bye.